Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to join again this uh, wonderful meeting. I would like to congratulate the whole of Talmica team for their uh, commitment to continuous education and uh, excellence, and I hope that we will all enjoy the fantastic uh, meeting. So I have the privilege to kick off the session, and I'm starting with uh, a talk highlighting structural, functional, and investigational aspects of the cornea. So I will remind you that the corneal tissue is an avascular transparent tissue with a thickness of uh, 540, 550 microns plus minus standard deviation and a refractive power of uh, 43 diopters being the most important uh, optical medium of the eye together with the lens. And we all know the layers of the cornea is composed of the epithelium, which is constantly regenerating, the basement membrane, the Bowman's layer, the stroma making up more than 80% of the corneal thickness, the duas layer before decimate membrane, the decimate membrane, and the corneal endothelium, which has no capacity of regeneration. Now, the innervation, the corneal innervation is uh, supplied by the uh, nasociliary branch of the ophthalmic uh, division of the trigeminal nerve and provided by thousands of branches of uh, uh, the subepithelial nerve plexus and the subbasal um, nerve plexus, which is uh, depicted in this uh, picture and is very relevant clinically for refractive surgery, as I will point out later. Now, the functions of the cornea. We all know that cornea is, as I mentioned before, a major optical medium for, for the eye. Physical barrier inhibiting uh, entry of bacteria. Uh, supports the regeneration of epithelium by the limbal stem cells. Uh, provides structural support, structural support and transparency um, with uh, the uh, um, extracellular uh, matrix of the stroma and is inducing also it's responsible for the um, uh, keratocyte cell differentiation, which is contributing to the corneal transparency and the immune regulation of the tissue. Now, the endothelium has uh, the function of uh, preserving the clarity of the stroma by dehydrating the, the stroma, has this pump, this well-known pump uh, function, and the endothelial cells, which cannot regenerate, but they have some migration capacity. So cornea has no, is devoid of uh, vascular and um, lymphatic tissue vessels, and this is well defined as the uh, immunological privilege of the cornea. So uh, there is an inherent resistance of cornea to inflammation, and it's something that is very useful and a big advantage for corneal surgeons in terms of uh, corneal transplantation uh, so, uh, and survival of the corneal graft. Uh, what has been new in the field since last time we all met up? Uh, we actually experienced the emergence of a new era. And uh, in the cornea field, there's been a major breakthrough within the last 10 years, maybe, with uh, major highlights of the corneal tissue, uh, particularly in uh, the domain of uh, corneal tissue engineering and gene therapy over the last five years, maybe. So last year, the Newcastle team, a research team, uh, has bioprinted the first 3D uh, corneal stroma equivalent by using bio-ink composed of um, collagen tissue, a mixture, actually, of uh, collagens and um, uh, cells, uh, keratocyte cells and fibroblasts. And uh, another major breakthrough was uh, the first uh, uh, genetic approach for the treatment of Fuchs dystrophy. Uh, we all know that uh, Fuchs dystrophy was until now, or has been um, uh, treated so far um, by corneal endothelial transplantation, DSEC and DMEC. Now, we know that there is a triple nucleotide in the um, TCF4 gene on, micro, on uh, chromosome uh, 18, uh, and the expansion of this 
CTG nucleotide is actually associated not only with the occurrence of the disease, but also with the uh, progression of the disease to end stage Fuchs dystrophy. So there has been major, major research in two directions. One major approach is to try to uh, gene edit this uh, triple nucleotide by using sophisticated techniques such as uh, CRISPR. And by uh, doing that, we can just remove, excise this uh, triple expansion and therefore reduce the induced toxicity of the TCF4 gene. The other approach is what this group, Hugh et al., have uh, showed actually in the lab, not in patients. They try to use uh, antisense treatment, antisense oligonucleotides, targeting this repeat expansion of the gene. And uh, this is something that uh, is more difficult to achieve, but also very promising because you, you actually rescue the uh, haplo, haplo uh, insufficiency of the TCF4 gene, and you have a greater uh, effect, not only uh, in uh, trying to uh, treat the disease, but also prevent the occurrence uh, of the disease. So, the last major breakthrough last year was uh, the first artificial cornea uh, made by Nishida and his group in Japan and transplanted to a Japanese female woman. Uh, this artificial cornea was all uh, made of um, induced uh, pluripotent stem cells. So they just used uh, um, stem cells, uh, stem cell lines, to create uh, all different cell lines of uh, normal human cornea, and they transplanted, they have uh, permission to transplant this cornea to a female patient. Uh, it has been done, I think, uh, early September this year, and one month afterwards, uh, they uh, announced that the results were very, very good. The, the cornea still remained clear. So to sum up, uh, this is a direction that we're moving to. We're trying to create um, artificial tissue, and engineer the tissue, the corneal tissue, and uh, not only deal with uh, corneal disease, which is uh, clinically evident, but try to prevent it by gene therapy, gene editing. Uh, now, coming to the investigation of the cornea, the basis of any corneal examination is, of course, the slit lab examination, providing an overview of corneal endothelium, such as here, where you can see the gute in Fuchs dystrophy, but also in corneal epithelium. You can observe this uh, intraepithelial uh, cysts in uh, Misman uh, corneal dystrophy, but also evaluate the stroma. You can see here the uh, Vox stria in uh, keratoconus patient. And of course, uh, ocular surface, you have this fluorescein positive corneal ulcer. So, Slit lamp examination is the uh, basic examination. We should, ne should never uh, forget that we start from there. And of course, we can carry on with uh, optical coherence tomography of anterior segment, useful to evaluate, for example, the depth of a corneal scar or the progression of uh, corneal hydrops in keratoconus, as you can see here, or corneal thinning in corneal ectatic disease, or even the corneal demarcation line after cross-linking for keratoconus. And for corneal surgeons, it's also useful for detecting sometimes detachment of the DMIC graft after endothelial keratoplasty. Now, scanning corneal confocal microscopy is also useful for ultrastructure examination of the cornea in vivo, we can actually assess all types of uh, uh, corneal cells, epithelial cells, endothelial cells, keratocytes, and also the uh, corneal nerves. And most important, it has significant clinical relevance in corneal infection. In acantamoeba keratitis, we can detect the cysts, which could also lie deep in uh, posterior stroma even pre 
or the filament in uh, mycotic keratitis. We can uh, quantify the corneal innervation also in uh, corneal disease such as um, uh, diabetic uh, corneal uh, neuropathy where we have decrease of the corneal uh, innervation or after herpes infection. And of course, uh, measure the uh, endothelial cell density. Now, corneal topography is a gold standard for detection of uh, corneal ectatic disease. It's a major tool for every corneal and refractive surgeon to assess anterior and posterior surface of the cornea, uh, to evaluate corneal curvature, co corneal thickness, uh, posterior, anterior and posterior corneal elevation. There is a ton of metrics that help us to uh, evaluate uh, posterior and anterior corneal surface, but the big advantage of uh, the shine fluke imaging is, of course, the access to the posterior surface of the cornea. As I told you before, uh, it's the major tool for diagnosing uh, ectasia, keratoconus, ectatic disease, and you can see here the displacement of uh, the thinnest point compared to the apex of the cornea and uh, anterior and posterior back elevation uh, in keratoconus. And of course, wavefront analysis is another tool that every refractive surgeon is using to uh, define the barometric profile of the cornea so that we can make decision on the treatment approach for our patients. Uh, you can see here the quality of vision in a patient with root mean square of 0 0.14. And as the aberrations are increasing, you can see that the quality of vision for the patient is decreasing tremendously. Now, finally, we have the uh, possibility uh, to um, assess corneal biomechanics in vivo by using two devices at this point nowadays. An older one, the ocular response analyzer, which is a combination of an air puftonometer together with an infrared camera detecting the um, uh, inwards and outwards aplanation of the cornea after uh, nair stimuli has been uh, uh, projected onto the uh, corneal surface. And we have the Corvus, which is, uh, has been actually for, uh, recently introduced in the market with its current software program. Uh, it's a nair puftonometer with a sign flu camera. And with the ocular response analyzer, we have metrics such as the corneal resistance um, factor and the keratoconus probability match. Actually, we have um, a confidential in uh, interval. The machine is telling of, of 95% for the cornea to be normal, to be suspect for ectatic disease, or to be uh, diagnosed uh, as ectatic cornea. And with Corvus, we have a huge number of uh, data information that we get by the machine, and they all uh, are integrated in a metric, in an index, the Corvus uh, biomechanical index, telling us actually if the cornea is behaving as a normal cornea or as an ectatic cornea. And it's very useful as an adjunct uh, diagnostic tool in cases where we have um, corneas lying somewhere in a gray zone between normal and ectatic, so before planning any refractive procedure. To sum up, uh, slit lamp microscopy should never be neglected because it's the basis for corneal assessment. And your segment OCT is useful preoperatively for planning uh, corneal refractive procedures, but also for post-op assessment and evaluation of our patients. Uh, Confocal microscopy has more research uh, implications in uh, the cornea field, but uh, has clinical relevance in uh, assessing uh, corneal infection, particularly acantamoeba keratitis and mycotic keratitis. Schieflung imaging is the basic tool for corneal refractive surgery, and evaluation of the corneal biomechanics by Aura or Corvis is also an emerging technology that could be useful for increasing 
uh, the safety profile of our patients and uh, providing better results uh, in our refractive procedures. Now, uh, as Secretary of the Ever Cornea Section, uh, I would like to invite you all to our Ever Congress, which will be held in the uh, beautiful city of Nice in France, uh, middle of November, uh, October. We have a very strong program with uh, interesting symposia. The uh, Greek presence is also very strong, and I'll be happy to welcome uh, many colleagues from Greece. And I thank you for your attention for my first talk. Thank you.